Hello, and thanks for being with us on The New Life Show with Dr. Michael Leitman. Hello, Dr. Leitman. Hello, everyone. Hello, Yael Shadarel. Hello. Today, we'd like to talk about indifference. We'd like to take a deeper look into this well-known feeling and phenomenon. Where does it come from? What for? Be with us, Yael, please. Yeah, we all know this state where we're indifferent towards something. We don't feel any big hate or anger or love or excitement, but it's a kind of an emotional disconnection, a feeling that we really don't care, it doesn't touch us, something that passes next to us and doesn't really touch us emotionally in a positive or negative way. And this is what we'd like to talk about today. And there's this saying that goes like this. Indifference is the weakness of the spirit and the weakness of the heart. And my question is, is indifference really an emotional matter? Is it the lack of a certain emotion or emotional disconnection, what is it? In the wisdom of Kabbalah, we learn that our basis is the desire, the power of the desire, that by the force, the power of the desire, do we measure all creatures, all created beings, the still, vegetative, animate people. And also in people, we have these four types, sanguine, choleric, phlegmatic, melancholic, these four different types of personality. Yeah. And also in the person himself, there are smaller desires, bigger desires, depends toward what, and so on, that we can really excite a person towards something or cool him down about something, and so on, meaning it all depends on the desire. The desire is the basis. Whether the desire is content or discontent, does it see some kind of a reward or fulfillment ahead? Accordingly, a person awakens, it heats a person up, pushes him towards different things, or vice versa. And that in our times, we feel that in many cases in life, we feel indifferent, it's a sign that it's an accumulation of several things. First of all, that our life and our future can't really attract us. How? With what? All of us already sailed in ships, we flew in airplanes, we rode horses, we see so much through the computer screen or our TV screens, so many things, or as if on the moon and on Mars and whatnot. This one thing. Another thing is, I see it on my grandchildren, on my little grandchild. We went on an airplane. Were someone to take me on a plane, or Owen, suppose, at the age of eight or something, Ah, first of all, I wouldn't sleep for a month before that. When you go in, where's this and what's that? He sat down, took a brochure from the seat in front of him, and started looking at different things as though it's a business person sitting first class and I looked at it and I saw that really it's a new generation. New generation. That nothing moves them. And so if they're so satiated already with anything and everything. What's left? So much so that there are arguments in different places on the internet about whether it's worthwhile being born at all or not. Things like that. Why? What for? What's the use? And people talk about it 
pretty openly and in a serious fashion. We either didn't want to talk about it because we looked at the world with wide open eyes, or we were even afraid to talk about it. What for? It can only confuse you, bring you trouble. And today it's different. Mankind went through a very special state where nowadays it's not afraid of talking about anything. There are no limitations from fascism to communism to Nazism. You can talk about everything openly, about relations between people, men and women, things that in the past you didn't talk about them so openly maybe. Today, no such thing. Sometimes I hear how the younger generation speaks. We were ashamed of talking that way. Maybe we thought about these things, but we're ashamed to talk about it. Today, no. What do I want to say? That indifference comes as a result of there not being anything that's hidden or appealing. There's nothing that's revealed that you can be inspired by. A person, nonetheless, he doesn't live like an animal that every day lives the same way without thinking about anything. A person, nonetheless, has to receive some kind of a new fulfillment every day, some new temptation. And I don't see that they're inspired by anything, really. I remember that when I was a child, and my parents told me that soon we're going to travel to the Black Sea, to the city of Edessa, and there we'll go on a big ship and we'll sail for three days to the Kafkaz Mountains. And I was about eight or nine. And they told me about it maybe a month in advance. That month before, maybe it was greater than what happened afterwards. You know, it's a child with all of his fantasies and everything. But today, kids don't have that. They don't. Sometimes I check it on my grandchildren. Maybe we'll do this or that. No, I have a party. I don't think that I should fly to Canada to my cousin. It's as though there's a kind of devaluation of all these things. Unfortunately, they don't have... We opened the world so much, and our world is coming to an end. Our corporeal world can't bring us any fulfillment. Not only to adults, grown-ups but even to children. Later they find some profession, and in their profession maybe they can find something for themselves, and if they have family, then the family too. It takes up a lot of your time and energy and so on. But really, despair and indifference we're out of strength. What's the connection between despair and indifference? Despair is a result of a person having something and then not having it anymore. Indifference is that whatever is ahead is no longer appealing. And nowadays it's simply lack of strength. To sit and do nothing is better. Give me something to smoke with a few more friends. And also, they don't really talk to each other that much. But this is enough. We're having a good time. We're killing time. And killing time, this is a relatively new concept. I want to give you a certain picture, and if you can explain it. 
possibly a person wasn't indifferent toward a certain person or a certain phenomenon, and suddenly he became indifferent. Until a week ago, he wasn't indifferent toward that, and now he is. What changed? His desire works differently than it used to. I used to be really interested in something. I really wanted to attain something. And suddenly, I discovered that the internality of that thing, or something about that thing that I wanted to attain, is not what I expected. It no longer meets my deficiency. Deficiency meaning what? My desire. Suppose I wanted ice cream. It doesn't matter what. Because uh, I as if tasted the taste and it was amazing. Afterwards, I discovered that this, this flavor doesn't exist in that ice cream at all. So it disappointed you. Yeah, suppose it disappointed me. I stopped seeing it as that thing that I want. Okay, so in the past I had a desire for something and therefore I was interested. Once my desire changed, or that that thing caused me to change my mind, I started feeling indifferent toward it. So you're saying that it's a natural process, not a big surprise. Something interested me in the past, now it doesn't, it's natural. A natural process is that will reach complete indifference towards everything in life. In the beginning of our talk, you said that a person needs a new stimulation all the time. A person wants to feel that he's alive and that he's excited about life and that he wants to attain things. He wants to live. But again, along with it, the more we stimulate ourselves, the more we look for such stimulations, what to run after, what to do, we will also very quickly cool down. We'll understand that in this life, there's not that much to do. So this mechanism of heating up and cooling down, it works more quickly, you're saying. Meaning, we leave things that excited us for a longer period of time more quickly. The entire world's open before us. There's no corner in the world that I didn't visit. Or if I want to be there, that I can't go or something. So this raises an even stronger question. According to what you're saying, the direction is becoming more and more indifferent toward this world, toward everything that's going on around us. Yes, and it's going to become harder to stay excited about something. The end is that we'll all feel despaired of this world and we'll say that it's useless, so much so. It's useless. I don't want anything, not the mountains, not the sea, not the sun, nothing. I can shut my eyes and not see these things at all. So much that I feel no passion about it anymore. I get no joy or fulfillment from it. I want to ask about one more thing. Indifference is a person's attitude toward a certain attitude, toward other people, different things. On the other side of the scale, we can put over-enthusiasm. There's someone who's indifferent, nothing touches him. And there's someone else, or a different person in a different state, that's over-enthusiastic. The one doesn't respond to anything like a rock, the other one responds too much. On the scale between these two, and what things in life is it better to reach a state where you do respond and where is it better to be indifferent? If I'm not balanced on the scale, then maybe there are certain things toward which I'm indifferent, things that I shouldn't have been indifferent towards. And there are things that I'm very responsive to, but I should have been more indifferent towards them. So what's the right balance between these two? Uh, 
Here you really have to scrutinize these things. The question is, what do we want? Who's asking about it? I, as a Kabbalist, that speaks about the meaning of life. I need people that are indifferent, that are despaired already, that understand that they'll get nothing out of this world, but it's meant only to be used as a springboard to the upper world. The upper world being what? That I open the system that controls nature, that I identify with that system, that I'm integrated in it, and I become eternal, whole, and perfect, like the system itself is. And my body, it remains within the boundaries of this world, and I take care of it as long as it's alive, just like you take care of any other living body. You have to give it so and so many things. Then this is how I take care of my body. This is a personal developmental process? Yes. So, regarding a person's development as, as a personality, as a person, toward that I shouldn't be indifferent. I should be very alert and active towards that. Of course, because by that I attain a whole perfect and eternal life. I have to be alert towards that. What should I be indifferent towards? All the pleasures of this world that actually... Can they really draw me to something? Awaken me towards something? It all comes and goes. So, regarding things like you just said that come and go, you're saying regarding them you can be indifferent, no problem. There's no big difference, meaning this is not what one should aim the entire strength of your desire and so on towards. I'm not sorry about losing taste for this world. And this world, what do you mean by it? Food, sex, family, money, honor, knowledge. But I love good food. Okay, but it should just be healthy. Okay, so you're not indifferent toward that. Okay, but again, I don't see it as the source of my existence, but I need it in order to keep on going. It's not one instead of the other. It's not that food, sex, family, money, honor, knowledge, that this is the meaning of my life, that this is what I live for. And of course, I'm willing to receive these things because I'm a human being, but in order to sustain my corporeal life, and above it, this being the main thing, to build a spiritual life. So, going back to my question, what should I be indifferent towards and what shouldn't I? Everyone has their own way. If we're talking about nature in general, about what nature wants from us, what it's pushing us at, that's something else. What is it pushing us at? To acknowledge the wholeness, perfection, and eternity of nature itself and to identify with its global plan. S meaning, what should I invest in? to get to know the system of nature. And there I shouldn't be indifferent. Because this is related to our eternity and not to the short life that we live here in our corporeal body. And regarding that, I should have a very strong response in terms of hate and love and, and all of my emotions are supposed to be very active there as needed. Well, what do you mean? Every time, as needed. That's needed for what? For the spiritual development. So, to see if I get it. You said that nature is pushing us to acknowledge its wholeness, perfection, and eternity on the spiritual degree, not in terms of our corporeal existence, that there are people that are concerned with their bodily existence. They want to live for another thousand years and to freeze themselves. Yeah, there's an entire industry of anti-aging and so on. 
So this is something that you're less occupied with, not occupied with that at all. So when you're saying that nature wants for us to understand its eternity, what do you mean? Nature wants for us to get to know it. Nature being what? The entire system, the entire force that is turning this world, the next world, the whole of reality, everything that's going on with us and what's above it, everything that we have to discover, all this is called nature. It's as if the system in which we exist, yes. So our evolution is pushing us to understand, acknowledge, get to know the system? Yes. Okay, we're researching the world for many years now, in physics, chemistry, biology, and different fields. What do you mean by to get to know the eternity of nature? To understand, to get to know the force that's operating in this entire system. Is it somehow related to where you said that indifference is a result of a person feeling that he's out of strength, out of desire, and nothing excites him, nothing's hidden, nothing's appealing, everything you described in the beginning? Because that force is that one force that operates in all of reality and it takes us through all these different states for us to understand the nothingness of everything that we're doing and therefore the current generation is especially despaired and indifferent and so on because it's the generation that's already standing on the threshold of going into the recognition of the higher state so in this development like you're saying the more advanced higher state it's as though nature is drying us out where we are, making us half asleep and indifferent towards what we have right now in our hands, towards this world, what we're familiar with. In order for us to like go into this elevator and rise to a new level, that what's awaiting us there? For us to get to know the whole perfect and eternal world in which we act rationally, and not that we care for our animate body that no longer limits us. Our, our physical body. Yeah, it's like any other animal. Okay, and what will we be concerned with? And then I no longer care about how do I put on blush and things and how will I look. But what I care about is how will I get to know the general reality and will be able to somehow benefit it, the whole of reality. Yeah, because here comes the question of what for? Just before that, when you talked about understanding the entire system and reality, you reminded me of Einstein, what nature wants me to be, Einstein or what? Suppose like a little Einstein, because I didn't like physics at school. It was a disaster for me. So what's supposed to excite me? Because this doesn't excite me. Physics, and I don't know, it's really dry. The laws of nature. No, no, I don't have a problem. If someone likes it, I respect that. I liked it because it's unrelated to people. Right, there are those that like it, there are those that don't. What I'm asking is, what's exciting about researching nature, understanding its eternity? You said that nothing excites people today. We're like quenching. So this next development that we're headed towards, what's so exciting there? Is our desire drawn to that? Our desire, first of all, has to feel indifferent towards what we have here, what it has in its hands. Right. Plunge into this kind of depression that even drugs won't help the younger generation. But only one thing. They'll want just one thing to discover the truth. And this is something that they will be drawn to their desire? Yes, because it all comes from that same place because of that same reason. So, development is pushing us in that direction. Does it mean that naturally there we, we will feel things, we will feel excited? Of course, we shift from these feelings to more eternal, more exalted, decisive feelings. Sure. And our mind will develop to ask such questions that we won't be asking about things from one day to the next, but about the eternal plan, 
about the distances that are beyond corporeality. What will happen to our emotions? Our emotions will develop correspondingly. It all depends on the desire. The desire develops in such a way that it leads us to understand the higher reality. The upper reality is one that has no beginning and no end, first of all. It's free of the boundaries of time. It's also free of the limitations of force, greater or smaller force. It depends only on the measure to which you can be more exalted, higher in your appreciation of nature. It's hard for me to express it, but... Our emotions, if we're talking about indifference as something that's not love or hate, it's emotionally nothing. It's being emotionally dried out. What happens to that? To what I feel in that more advanced state? I mean, my emotional world, what does it look like there? If today it's quenching, fading away, a great big emotional space with new emotions opens up that are all independent of your animate corporeal body. Okay, then what? They depend on eternity, on dimensions where there's no time, space, or motion. Dimensions where there is no me, you, him, her, but it's all related, it's all a part of the comprehensive nature, and we all belong to it, we're all in it. What's the most dominant feeling there? Emotion. Unity. Connection. The unification of all forces, all inclinations, all created beings. Unity, a feeling of inner unity, yeah. Dr. Leitner, last question. Indifference is developing today in order to lead us to what? To this? That we'll understand that we have to leap over it. It's, you know, it's like we're being squeezed to pop out of this place, this narrow place. Into what? Into the enlightened world. Dr. Leitman, thank you very, very much. Thank you, Yael. Thank you for being with us. Till next time, all the best. <laughs>